Okay, today we're going to be seeing if you can take the color out of food. So I got this question a few days ago. Leah Juarez asked, can you take the color out of food? For example, a strawberry. So I decided to take this one up and see what happens when we try to take the color out of food. Let's see if I can turn a strawberry or a raspberry white. So color happens when all of the white light that bounces off an object doesn't return and hit our eyes, so it looks a different color. Because white light is just a mixture of all the colors, so if some of the colors get absorbed, then all of those colors don't return back to our eyes, so it looks a different color than white. But what is it that causes something to absorb color or not? Well, it has to do with the molecular structure that it's hitting. So I have here three different molecules. So if you're not familiar with this way of drawing molecules, this is just a way they do it in organic chemistry. And it's an easy way to draw molecules because you don't have to draw every single atom that's in a molecule, you just worry about the carbons. And so when you draw a line, that just means there's a carbon on this end of the line and there's a carbon on this end of the line, and it's connected through a bond. And if there's two lines, that means it's a double bond. So this one has two carbons, this has one, two, three, four carbons, this has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So whenever there's double bonds like this in a molecule, it means it can absorb light. That just means that light can hit it and it can knock some electrons up to a higher energy state and then it falls back down and releases that light. And so the more double bonds there are in a molecule alternating like this, the higher the wavelength of light it can absorb. So for example, this can absorb wavelength of light around 171 nanometers. This can absorb around 217 nanometers. And this one's around 258 nanometers. But all of these wavelengths of lights are way too small for visible light. So you can see as, as the molecules get longer with more and more alternating double bonds, then it can absorb bigger and bigger wavelengths of light. So in order for a molecule to absorb visible light, it has to absorb in the range of 390 to around 700 nanometers. So you can see that in order to absorb light, we need longer, big, long molecules with alternating double bonds. So for example, one of these molecules that you'll be familiar with is this one. There, I think we got it. So this molecule is called beta carotene. This is what's in carrots. And carrots are orange, which means this absorbs blue light. So if you take blue light out of white light, you get orange light. So this is an orange molecule. So now we know that in order to make color, you need a big long molecules with lots of alternating double bonds like this. So now we know how to get rid of color. If you can just stop these double bonds from alternating or stop them from occurring, then you don't have color anymore. Even though the molecule's still there, it won't absorb the light, so it won't be colored. So one way you can stop these double bonds is you just send in the molecule otherwise known as bleach. So what bleach does is it sends chlorine to attach to all these double bonds, and it also sends hydroxide to attach to them, and it breaks these double bonds so they're no longer there. And now since it broke these alternating double bonds, this molecule can no longer absorb visible light. So that's why bleach can get rid of color. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I have here some bleach. So what would happen if I were to put some food coloring in this bleach here? Let's try it, let's try it with red. Well, wow, that's pretty cool what's happening. That's weird. It keeps reaching down and then going back up. That's really weird, actually. I don't know why it's doing that. Huh. And then it goes back up. I'm guessing that it's kind of this battle between centrifugal force and the dye being heavier and wanting to fall down. So you can see that there's some yellow left because in order to make these different dyes, they add different colors and the hypochlorite reacts with the different colors at different rates, and so it kind of changes colors as it attacks each different color in there. Okay, so we saw what happened when you put dye in bleach, but what happens when you put something that's actually colored in bleach, like a whole strawberry or a raspberry? Do you think a whole strawberry could turn white just from bleach? Let's check it out. Strawberry. 
raspberry. So I'm going to let it soak for 24 hours. Let's come back and see what it looks like. 24 hours later. Okay, it's now been 24 hours and look at that. The whole strawberry turned white. That's amazing. I did not expect that. Okay, let's try to get it out and see what it looks like. Oh wow, it's like melted away. It's really mushy. The raspberry. Okay, there you go. A strawberry with the color removed from it. So what's cool is even the leaves have been bleached white. And so it removed the chlorophyll from the leaves. The raspberry on the other hand didn't get completely bleached and just kind of this brown mush now. I think that's because the raspberries kind of contained in these individual little pockets that has a skin around them and so the bleach wasn't able to penetrate it as easily. But for the strawberry it worked quite well. Even the seeds got bleached. So let's cut it open and see how deep it got inside. See if it actually bleached the entire strawberry or just the outside. Let's see if it's completely white inside of it. So it looks like for the most part it's white inside, but it stayed red a little bit on the very center. Look at that. So if I would have left it soaking for longer, it probably would have gotten all the way inside of there. So if you really don't like the color of your food and you want to bleach it, you don't necessarily have to wait 24 hours. That's just because in order for the bleach to reach inside, it had to diffuse all the way through the strawberry to react with the inside of it. But if you just mush everything up, for example, if you just mush a bunch of fruits together, you can just pour the bleach on and within a few seconds it turns white. Pour our bleach on. But you're better off just leaving the color in your food. The reason is, another word for the reaction with this bleach with the colors is oxidation. And oxidation breaks things down. It disrupts these chemical bonds and it causes them to break. And the last thing you want is your cells to oxidize. You'd rather have something else oxidize instead of the cells in your body. But if it has something else to react with instead of your cells, that's much better for your body. So that's why it's good to eat things with a lot of color because it provides the molecules to react with so that instead of reacting with your cells, it reacts with those color molecules. So anything with rich, dark colors is good for you to eat. They're called antioxidants. And you've probably heard that before, and you can see what that means. They're antioxidants because they get oxidized instead of you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't got your Action Lab subscription box, hit this link here and head to theactionlab.com. And I'm giving a special for the 4th of July. You get $4 off your first subscription. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section and I'll see you next time.